welcome to Phoebe's Handmade Dress. This is a podcast all about sewing, knitting and creating your own handmade wardrobe. My name is Stevie. I'm currently coming to you from uh, the southeast of England and I am stuck in my house. <laughs> Same as everybody. Um, so I'm currently talking to you from my fort that I've made for myself in my sewing room. So I'm not sat on a chair today. I am... Um, Sat on a duvet with cushions and fairy lights and trying to keep myself cosy and upbeat while we're all going through um, lockdown. So um, if you're new, welcome. If you've uh, been here before, welcome back. Um, I'm going to try and do these a little bit more frequently if I get some stuff done. Um, the little man is napping, so that's good. Hopefully that means I've got enough time to chat. Um, so yeah, get on with it, Stevie. <laughs> I hope everyone's well. Um, I know this isn't the easiest of times for lots of different people. Um, and just want to say I'm thinking of everybody. And if you've got kids, I'm really feeling for you, especially school age kids. I mean, there's a little bit small for knowing what's going on, but I can imagine it's a bit of a nightmare if you've got um, primary school age kids at the moment and you're trying to entertain them without leaving the house. So with all that gumph out of the way, um, I have sewing and knitting today, so also sewing, very important. So if you are a sewer and not a knitter, I have two FOs for you today. Um, starting off with knitting, and I will try and timestamp if I remember to um, timestamp when I start talking about the sewing. Um, it's the first time I've actually managed to get up my sewing machine uh, last weekend for an afternoon and it was bliss. I forgot how much I miss it. Um, I'm tempted to test out whether I'll wake the baby if I use my sewing machine in my overlocker. I'm a bit scared to, just in case I do actually wake him up and then I have to deal with the wake. But um, my husband said, you know, try it because he might sleep through and then you might actually be able to have some crafting time while he's asleep. So we'll try it. Um, we're both on lockdown. So um, he's also working from home, which is lovely. It means that we can have uh, my husband, pie maker, around. So that's great. So yes, on to knitting. There is no FOs this week. Um, I, those who were with me last week will have seen that I had three FOs last week, which is unheard of, so there are none this week. I'm sorry about that, I should have maybe waited for a week, but I don't know, I didn't. We have no yarn acquisitions this, this week, but we do have um, bag acquisitions, so you can stay tuned for those. Things we've seen before... Um, I've made some progress on my floozy by Libby Johnson. I'm almost, almost, almost at the end of the body. Um, I made this quite large, not intentionally, um, but it's going to be so cosy and oversized, um, which is fine, I don't mind. But um, the yarn is Fingering Weight uh, Knit by Numbers by John Arben. Um, yes, so we are almost at the end of the body. I'm doing a long body version. I would be done by now if I was doing the shorter version. Um, I'm going to try and get it to 17 inches um, with ribbing, maybe without ribbing, so it would be like 20 inches. It might be too long, I don't know. Um, so yes, I've got a little um, chapel view crafts cake charm, rainbow cake. Uh, so this is where I needed to do about three more inches, so I'm plugging away with that backwards and forwards, but that's fine, it's nice mindless knitting without too much thought going into it. Um, I did have to block this, the reason being I had a bit of a nap the other day and I came downstairs and um, Prime Maker said to me, oh, um, just to let you know, Theo spilt coffee all over you knitting. I was like, oh no. And it wasn't too bad. It was just a little bit down here, but it was right at the front. 
so I just blocked it on the needles um, just to see if I could get the coffee out which I did manage to do so that's good um, yes I'm loving this project and oh my god this knit by numbers is so soft now it's been blocked um, I can definitely feel the difference between the blocked and the not I don't know if you can see uh, maybe light's not great today I'm afraid so yeah I blocked it to about here and this is the knitted without being blocked so you can see it's fluffed up really beautifully bloomed I believe is the word so yeah plugging along on this this is mosaic knitting for those who haven't seen the floozy and um, there is a jumper version as well but I really wanted to knit the cardigan um, that is also blocked really nicely the zigzags didn't look as clean before so yep that is my floozy I still have absolutely oodles of yarn left I still have two whole skeins and a little so I think I might have some left over which I don't mind I've got a few um, I've got some pink knit by numbers that I used to make the I've forgotten the name of it um, that I used to make the cowl by Molly Klein Designs I test knit her cowl I will put the name down below because it's just eluding me at this particular moment um yeah so I knit that with knit by numbers I also knit my Jen Steingas fern and feather out of the DK version of knit by numbers um I don't actually wear it it's really sad I really love that jumper but it is too tight so I might I don't know I'm sort of toying with the idea of undoing it and re-knitting it but right now there's too much on the needles and I don't want to do it yeah, so that's that. <laughs> um, the next thing I have on the needles, which you have seen before, I think, I sweater, the Ariel sweater by Alonga Vekana. Um, I have finished the body. It is beautiful. I love, 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 love it. It's quite big, so again, oversized. Um, so I wanted it to be cosy. I'm currently in the middle of a row, but I'm working up the back now. Yeah, hang on, there we go. So I'm just working the back, um, back and forth in stockinette at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to get this and the other one finished fairly soon. Um, I think my sleeves will take longer on the floozy than they will on the... Oh, than they will on the RL because this is DK. This DK is Eden Cottage Yarns. So it's Eden Cottage Yarns in their 100% um, alpaca, alpaca, which I think is Boland DK. I'll put it down below. I'm pretty sure it's Boland. And the colour is fuchsia, although I would say it's more of an orchid purple. It's lovely. I really love this design. I'm really glad I cast it on, on a bit of a whim. Um, but and it's so soft I can't wait to wear it these two are currently being housed in Tudor Rose craft bags so the RL in my purple one because I thought they coordinated nicely and then the um, floozy in my pink one um, I'm also really rubbish at saying anything about needles, so the floozy is currently on my Chowgu. No, it's not. It's currently on Knit Pro Zings on a three and a half metal fixed. And then my RL is on my Chowgu's on a four millimeter on my interchangeables. Um, I love knitting with my Chowgu's. Um, at Unravel I did manage to get a few more sets of Chowgoos and in a way I kind of wish I got a few more. Um, reason being as I just use fours and three and a half so often that I could do three or four sets of those. Um, I also bought some fixed 12 inch circulars to try out for sleeves and socks so I will report back on those but at the moment they're just sat in my charity case waiting so I got a 4, a 3 and a 2.5 I already had a um, much smaller um, 
circulars but I didn't get on with them so well so I'm trying the slightly bigger size um, I will report back on those but at the moment I'm not knitting any socks although I really want to cast some on um, I'll talk about dream knitting and stuff later the next thing I have in my Ted Knits bag which I love so much is my Nanook. Now I don't think you've seen this before. I don't remember if I've shown it. I have cast this on about four times. I've tried so hard to actually work this bear track pattern. The pattern is by might be Isabel Kramer. If it's not, I will put it down below. Um, I'm really not a fan of the way that the pattern is written and I know that lots of people said they found it helpful, it's quite um, blocky and so it says for each size you do it this many times and this, but I find it all a bit overwhelming and confusing and when I was a slightly newer knitter the bear trap pattern just looked impossible and I cast it on and I made a mistake and I didn't know how to fix it so it left it as it was for a long time. Then I decided I was going to pick it up again this week and I don't know what I'd done so I thought, do you know what, it's in Aran weight, I'm just going to cast it on again, I'm going to go really slowly through the pattern and see if I can work it out. The pattern is so easy, it's beautiful, it's like a um, feather and fan with rib, it's so cool. Um, but yes, this is the Nanook and this is out of Cascade 220 in the Anise colourway. Here you go, so I have one more repeat of this kind of feather and fan rib pattern lace thing. This is the neck, so it goes kind of like that, I think. Um, yeah, so I think that's sort of the front edge of the cardigan, the front collar. I guess it would be kind of around like that somehow. Um, yes so it's actually really easy i put markers in once i put markers in it was super simple it's just following the instructions word for word um but it does have a rhythm i'm really enjoying this because it's iron weight it's going really fast and i've been used to knitting with fingering and four ply quite a lot recently so um yes and yes it is identical color to my floozy my floozy and this one they are almost identical obviously this doesn't have any color work in it it's just me plain blue and i do wear blue a lot so i have something of that done and i'm really enjoying it and actually i would recommend it to other people but i would say not a beginner knitter necessarily um this is my chapel view crafts i think sandwich that's on there just to show me the front side doesn't really match but I didn't have a another suitable um, food charm to put on it at the moment. So that is Nanook. Then I have, okay I think this is the last whip I want to show you, oh, actually I can show you this one first. So this is in a little makeup bag that I bought in DK Max. Babbleless one but it's quite cute. I thought it was perfect for like hat and sock projects. This is my beehive hat, um, I've forgotten who it's by, I will put it down below. I have messed this up, I'm just going to go out and say it. I've messed this up really badly, it's been ages since I've done cables and although the cables aren't complicated, they're cables without cable needle and I don't know whether I should have just sucked it up and done it with a cable needle but I've messed this up royally in some places. Some places it looks quite good that bit looks okay but then other places it just looks wrong and horrendous so I might I don't want to rip it back I do I'm gonna have to rip it back I might even just start it again this is the beehive hat it's by Amy and the yarn is Road to China Light in Topaz. So Road to China Light is cashmere, camel, silk and baby alpaca. So it is super soft. And it is a sport weight. Excuse me. Oh, it's so comfy. It is a sport weight. Um, but the pattern is a DK. And I don't think it matters 
particularly kind of a cute headband actually um i don't think it matters particularly it's a little bit open but i think it'll bloom once i've um blocked it anyway and i just really like the kind of floppy nature of it so yes i'm that's not forgotten i just have to rip it back and probably start the cables all over again um so i've just got to rip back to the ribbing not my favorite job but probably has to be done i might do that after the podcast and the last whip that i have for knitting is the odyssey shawl now i can't remember whether i didn't show you the beehive and then no, i can't remember what i showed you last time um i think i started this i don't remember i should really watch the podcasts back but i hate looking at myself <laughs> on these i just do the editing as minimal as i can and then just check it up on youtube so this is the odyssey shawl which is by hohi locatelli it's free pattern it's dk weight i wanted to do something dk because um i was getting a bit bored of endless stock net that being said this is now endless garter so the colors that i have for this are lay family yarns bramble jam I'll put it down below, I've forgotten, really sorry Kelly. Um, then I have Dusty Dimples in Just Keep Swimming, or Keep On Swimming, I think it is. And then I have Biff Sugar Yarns in Demelza, which I'm desperate to get a sweater quantity of. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that one properly. Um, yeah, that's not too bad. So yes, it's those three together, um, which is, I suppose, out of my wheelhouse in terms of colour, but I thought I'd give it a go to have more neutral. So I am currently this far into my first colour. I'm very nearly, I think I've got like three more rows before I start the lace. So those who don't know the Odyssey shawl, it's um, garter panel and then a piece of kind of lace and then another garter panel in the next colour and then the lace and then another garter panel and the lace. So um, yes I'm loving how this is knitting up. This is the bramble jam or crab and apple blah, all over the place today sorry um, by Leigh Van Yarns and everyone knows that I love Kelly and Megan and Nick <laughs> and I love her yarn and I've got lots of it and I haven't been knitting it and I just thought these were three skeins that I kept picking up and putting down going this will be a hat, this will be a hat, this will be and I just thought you know what I have to start using my stash rather than picking it up and going too special got to put it back um, so I thought this is out of my comfort zone but I really want to try these three together and actually I think they're going to go really nicely and will be lovely in um, a neutral-ish cow cow neutralish shawl so yes so i've got that far on that um i have been stash diving and having a little look at what's in my stash i have lots of sweater quantities that i need to work down um so I'm trying not to buy, but I'm really conscious that there are businesses that are struggling at the moment, particularly indie dyers and local yarn shops, those sorts of things. So if you possibly can, um, or if you're planning to go to a yarn show and you're now not going because it's cancelled, really do consider, um, you know, spending that money on people's online shops or for gift cards, all those kinds of things, because... Um, I know people are really struggling at the moment and I will do my best. My birthday is coming up my 30th in May, so hopefully it's early May so I doubt we'll be out. But um, yes, I did think about maybe, oh, I did think about maybe um, asking for gift cards or maybe ordering some stuff now and um, Pymaker puts it away for me for my birthday so um, if you possibly can really do um, think about your local independent and indie dyers at the moment because I know people are struggling and it's scary and unknown and not their fault um, so with that in mind 
I have a few acquisitions. They're not many. There's four. <laughs> that sounds like, oh yeah, there's not many, but. Um, should I do those and then sewing? I really haven't got a format worked out for sewing and knitting. Um, I know people will probably like separate videos, but I don't think I can get that time to be able to do separate videos. Um, but if you would let me know whether you prefer me to get the sewing up out first and show you the sewing, if I've got any, or you prefer the knitting and the acquisitions and then the sewing, or you prefer sewing, you prefer knitting, sewing, acquisitions, just let me know because I, um, I'm not very good at there being a specific order. I bought from, I don't remember, I'll put it down below. Um, so I bought from a knitting shop in the UK, um, they are a company from the Netherlands, and the company is um, the Blue Rabbit House, and when I went to Unraveled, um, people might remember me saying that I um, came across Cross and Woods, and I really loved their shop, and they're in The Hague in the Netherlands. Um, so I obviously can't visit and they had some project bags which I really loved and I really wanted to buy but I sort of talked myself out of it and talked myself down which is fine um, and then they popped up on Instagram and those same bags are the ones from the Blue Rabbit house and there was a discount and the discount also applied to local yarn shops and with a quick Google I realised she had some UK stockists and they had the bags that I wanted, yay! So I quickly purchased them. <laughs> um, so the first one, I think um, her illustrations are hand done by the lady that runs the company, the Blue Rabbit House. I'll put her name down below, I'm sorry I don't know it at the moment. Um, so she does the illustrations. Oh so good so I bought the polar bear it's kind of like moody polar bear but I really loved it and so I think this bag they were donating money to kind of um, climate based charities and wildlife based charities which is great and then the la the other one that I bought was the koala which was um, designed to help with the wildfires in Australia and I really love them. They are not necessarily my wheelhouse um, in terms of colour, this one definitely is, but um, yeah I just really liked the koala, it was super cute and you know for a good cause too. So that was great. So I bought those. Then I have ordered these a long 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 time ago. I have been waiting for these for a really long time and um, most people know the Grocery Girls as the best knitting podcast of all time and I would definitely be on that boat. I love watching Jodie and Tracy. And um, I ordered some bags from Mrs Brown's bags. They took an age to come. Unfortunately, I paid loads of customs. They posted through my door saying, oh yeah, you owe £3. I was like, yay! And then I got there and it was not £3. <sighs> Never mind. I got my bags. So they have a sale. I think they still have a sale ongoing, actually. Jodie's really generous with her sales that she has. And she often has her bags up, on, um, up for sale on Etsy as Mrs Brown's bags. So here you go, this is the first one. This is Succulent is the colour way. And I think this is what she calls a drawstring bag. And then I have the Bucket Tote. And this is in one of the classics, which is Jazz. And I've always wanted a Jazz bag. Let's say this is the Jazz. And this is the bucket tote, so it's nice and roomy. I haven't actually used this one yet. The other one is housing my um, Odyssey shawl. 
but yes really nice and roomy and actually what I might do is now I've got my little fort down here um, in my sewing room I might just put it on the floor and stick some knitting in it um, just so I've got something to use when I'm here although the majority of my knitting I tend to do downstairs because otherwise I feel like I'm being antisocial um, they are beautifully made um, I would say the canvas is not a bad quality the print is pretty good as well I was worried that I'd seen a few where the print um, kind of split right in the middle of the fabric like the repeat started again and I didn't I was worried about that but I didn't seem to get one of those so that was okay um, I would definitely buy them again problem being the customs and all that kind of stuff however the um, sterling although it's not great at the moment um, is pretty good against the Canadian dollar so I suppose if you're saving money on your um, exchange rate you might um, do okay if she's having a sale which was my thinking in the first place but it didn't quite work out like that so ah, sewing um, I've been sewing y'all um, I started because I really wanted to finish my Cali shirt. All of my machines are threaded up with navy at the moment. My overlocker and my um, sewing machine. I have, for those who don't know, I have two sewing machines. I have a mechanical Husqvarna E10 and I have a Janome. It is a, it's got a really complicated number. It's a Janome XL, I think it's 301. And then I have a Toyota 4-thread overlocker. Um, I have the mechanical machine I tend to use for top stitching and I used to teach people sewing from home. Um, so I used to teach on that one. Then I've got my um, electronic computerised Janome and that has never worked 100%. Um, the pedal connection isn't very good, I need to get it serviced but I just haven't had a chance to find somewhere um, where they'll do the computerised machines and yeah my overlock is fine. So it's slightly irritating to sew on my Janome but I'm persevering because I want to sew and it's a lovely machine it's just I should have sent it back when I got it but I didn't. Your story. I wanted to finish my Cali shirt by um, Closet case patterns, yes, closet case patterns, and I will insert a picture if I can find one. Um, I don't know if I've got a picture of my actual one. I've got pieces really neatly folded up into the pattern um, envelope, but do you think I can find the rest of the shirt? No, no idea where it went in the move, um, so I couldn't finish that. So what I ended up doing was cutting out a Kyoto tee by Papercut Patterns. Um, it's kind of like a sweatshirt. Uh, again, I will put a picture up. And yeah, so I cut that out. I cut it out in Isabella jersey from Fabric Godmother. Those who um, have followed me along for a while will know that I used to work for Fabric Godmother for a little while. I was doing some smaller jobs. Um, and so I have quite a lot of fabric that is fabric godmother um I probably can't remember where all my fabric comes from nowadays because it's been so long but I know this is the Isabella jersey so I have completed the Kyoto this is the Kyoto I will insert a picture of me wearing it somehow some way that's quite a good picture of it I chose not to do the cuffs on the sleeves and on the band reason being it already felt quite bulky I had to take it in massively I cut the XL I've probably taken two and a half inches off each side seam all the way from the um, sleeve right the way down um, on both sides so I've probably taken four inches out of the out of it I love it I really have been wearing a lot of um, jumpery type things shove it on over a vest top perfect for breastfeeding which I still am doing so um, 
Yes, and I used to have a navy maternity top that I wore all of the time with long sleeves and I'm finding a lot of my clothes don't have long sleeves apart from a few of the lark tees that I made um, which are not quite, they're a bit too fitted for feeding. So I am planning to make a few more lark tees. I might make this again and I might make the jumper version in maybe a sweater knit but this is, well you can probably see, the Isabella is a lovely drapey um, jersey. I th I'm assuming there's some viscose in there and it has this lovely kind of brushed mould effect. I've used it before in other t-shirts that I wear and they wear so so well. So I was really happy with that and I will probably make a Kyoto again. Although the sleeve frill, I don't know, I might try and make one without the frill, see if I like it because it's quite a unique feature. So I just don't want to um, overuse it, I suppose. So that is the Kyoto. Does anybody else start writing notes and then ignore them completely? So this is Jaylee 3245 and this is a cotton jersey also from Fabric Godmother. Now let's see if the eagle eyed among you can notice anything. It's got this lovely um, curved hem which I really like on my tops so I might steal that um, for other tops. It kind of looks like a workout top but I think I will wear it a lot. I've got a um, Shibori navy style um, top like this and I wear it all the time. As you can see it is quite sheer. I use this fabric to make my husband a t-shirt. Um, he doesn't wear it, partly because it's too big for him. Um, but there you go. Um, and I will wear it the best so it's fine. Um, Eagle eyed among you will notice it's not 100% finished. Um, I've got a lovely band here which I've overlocked and stitched. I was really pleased actually with the um, bindings on this. I thought it was going to be a challenge which is why I put it off. I had this cut when we were in the last house. I just hadn't fully finished it. Um, the reason I haven't got that band is because I can't find it. I only could find one of the um, arm bindings and I can't find the fabric either to <laughs> make a new arm binding. Um, I'm pretty certain I have more of this fabric, I just don't know where it is. So if I find it or I find the binding I will finish that off and be able to wear it but to be honest I'm likely to wear it with a cardigan. I might just wear it as it is. So yes that fabric was also Fabric Godmother and it was a cotton jersey, it's a nice thin um, do we call that a mall? I suppose we do call that a mall. I always get confused with marls and slubs. Slubs are little bits that pop out, I think, of the weave. So, I also have another FO, but I can't show you it because it's on my husband's body. Um, I sewed him some pyjama bottoms for Christmas about two years ago, and uh, we needed to hem them just to, they were massive, I don't know why they were so massive, it was a free pattern I think, free PJ pattern for men, um, I can't remember where I got it from, and I made them out of the Atelier Brunette Bye Bye Birdie cotton, I have, it's also this colour, which is why I made him the t-shirt in this sort of colour, um, yeah he's currently wearing them and has worn them for lockdown most days so that's really good because normally I would not expect him to wear something that I'd made but it's taken me two years to hem them so I think he's just making the most out of it. <laughs> um, so three finished sewing objects, I'm really proud of that, I know some were, some were whips um, but I am planning to sew up some more t-shirts soon, particularly long sleeve because I'm finding that I'm cosying up at home, I really want to be warm and cosy in a long sleeve. Also wearing a cardigan, not that practical for breastfeeding, um, personally I find. So yes, sorry about the light today guys, I am sat right by the window but um, it keeps going from raining to sunny 
it's this lockdown we've had so many gorgeous sunny days but um today is not one of those days um i hope everyone's doing okay i have a couple of dream knitting ideas and plans um in terms of dream sewing i think i definitely like to make that jaylee pattern again there is also there is also a baseball tee style um, that goes with this one. So um, you have the sleeves that fit in a kind of raglan. Um, who would like to make the baseball tee version of this? Um, I think I'd like it contrasting so that you see that, the, the sleeves. And I've seen some gorgeous versions where people have done like a, a plain white front and floral sleeves and things like that problem is trying to get the jersey to match in terms of the content. I don't know that in my stash I've got um, stuff that matches exactly the same uh, fibre contents. So we will see if I can work that out. Otherwise it will be um, Lark Tees. Plantain is a free pattern if those, if you don't know. Um, by Deer and Doe. I made absolutely loads of those. Funnily enough, I think I made one years ago in this Isabella jersey and I wore it to death. It fell apart because I wore it so much. It was just bobbly. Um, so I'd really like to make some more of those. Um, my fabric stash is so full. They are full of fabric. To be fair, it's only four, eight. Maybe ten of them are full of fabric. <laughs> okay, it's bad. So ten of those are full of fabric. So I need to get working on some, some more sewing. I've also got a um, box full of cotton scraps that I'd like to make some bags out of. I haven't got there yet. I'm not a bag maker and I've got a bit of a funny thing about making bags. I had a really bad experience once with them. It's a story for another day, but um, yes, so I'd really like to do that. Dream Knitting, Whitmore Sweater by um, Amy of the Little Tailoress. Um, I really want to make that. I have swatched with some Camilla Vad lamb's wool and some um, Bisha Bush Pity. Um, mohair and I'm not sure whether I liked the fabric it kind of made it rose goldy the lambs wool is quite rustic and it's this um, yep yeah, that's about right so it's kind of like a pinkish mauve color and the lambs at uh, the lambs wool and the mohair is a kind of beigey color I showed it last time because I got it at Unravel and I'm just not sure whether that combination works um, but I don't know that I've got any more fingering weight that would work with that mohair. And I certainly haven't got enough mohair to make a full Whitmore sweater. So it's a bit difficult because I'd really like to make one but I've just not got the correct tools on hand. And I'm trying not to um, do too many purchases at the moment. I suppose I could knit it in a DK and forego the mohair. Um, not sure if I've got a mohair. Uh, not sure if I've got a DK sweater quantity. Then the other thing, and if you've been following me on Instagram, I don't post all that often, but I have been posting in stories recently a little bit. I did some swatching for um, the mohairs that I bought at Unravel. So the first one I bought was the um, Spectrum Fiber mohair in Solstice, I think. What's it called? Oh no, Blue Planet. Ignore me. So, the first one I bought was Blue Planet by Spectrum Fibre. This is it caked up. I have two skeins of this and I bought it specifically to go with um, a yarn called Seascape, which I bought from... Is it Seascape or Sea Story? So I bought this mohair to go specifically with a homespun house yarn that I had bought uh, when she lived in Germany, um, which was called Sea Story, and it had some Stellina in it. Here's the yarn. Again, sorry the light's gone a bit rubbish. Uh, yeah, 
that's pretty good representation. It's a little tiny bit darker than that. Um, I don't know if you can see the Stellina. But I bought two types of mohair. I bought the Blue Elephant mohair, which has also got a blue name. And I swatched with both. And I liked both. And if you were on my Instagram stories, you will have seen the pictures that I took of both of them swatched. And I decided that actually this and this made the best combination. So I'm intending to make a love note or a ranunculus out of this. I think this is probably going to be ranunculus simply because that's what I planned for it to be originally. I just really enjoyed this like pink pop every now and again and it didn't detract from the original yarn which is also beautiful. Can I also say how excited I am that um, a homespun house Molly has decided, Molly, her family, have decided that they're moving back to Germany, um, which I'm not quite sure why, but um, I'm very happy about that because I love a homespun house yarn and I've got a few skeins that I've been hoarding um, because I didn't want to pay shipping from the US. So I'm very pleased that she's moving back to Germany because that means I can buy a homespun house again. Yay! Um, so, you know, safe journey, Molly, and, and your family as well. I'm hoping it all goes to plan and lovely and um, you settle back in nicely. So, those two mohairs were the mohairs that I was sort of debating between. Um, so we have the spectrum fiber and the blue elephant, black elephant, and the black elephant. Um, the black elephant, I can't remember the colorway, and I've lost the ball band, so I will put it down below. Then I had another skein, or two skeins, that I've been hoarding, because it was another US purchase, which was from Emily of Yarnbury, who has a podcast with her sister, um, called Meanwhile at the Castle. Her sister's name is Deborah. She also has a yarn shop, but I don't think she's dying at the moment. Not sure. Um, but Emily is Yarnbury, and when she first launched Yarnbury, um, I really loved her concept, and I still really love her concept, which is um, yarns based on books and authors and quotes from books, and oh, just my heart. I've been teaching English, so for those that know, um, it was totally my thing. So this is called Eat Me Drink Me and was Alice in Wonderland inspired. Here it is caked up, it's so gorgeous. And I have two skeins of this and they're quite big yardage um, for four fingering weight yarn. And so I thought, do you know what, I'm just gonna try this and this and just see what happens with the mohair. And actually I have the same amount of mohair as I do yarn with this and so I swatched this and I was like oh no this needs to happen so this might also be a love note or a ranunculus I haven't decided which is going to be which it depends I guess on the yardage too because oh, funny things there you go so yes it is amazing it tones down those super super brights just to be kind of like deep purpley pops and it's super soft so I'm excited about that. Um, I did my swatches on a 6mm for those that are interested. Um, simply because that's what the ranunculus states um, to use as your needle. So that's what I did with that. So there at the moment my dream knitting. I really want to knit myself some um, fairy light socks. I've had that planned for ages and I haven't started. I also really want to use these three skeins together in something. Um, this is Beehive Yarns Rose Lichen which I bought on a D-stash I think from Nora George. Uh, it has Stelina in it. And then this is a Nora George. Um, this is a Weed Ram which was an Edinburgh colourway um, which has also got gold Stelina in it. Both of them are gold Stelina. And then I have this from uh, Dusty Dimples. And I don't know whether I'd use this or something else because I really love this yarn and I kind of want it in a sweater. Um, and this is Timber and it's not got any sparkle in it. But those three together 
oh, I, just, I don't know what I'm going to make. I have those to work on. So there's plenty of stuff to do. Um, it's just getting the time to do it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I haven't got much more to say. Um, I'm really excited about how the community are kind of coming together and doing lots of kind of meetups online and those kinds of things I'm going to go going to go to. I'm going to attend a couple of those um, over the next week or so so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm not sure some of the people I've not met before so it's kind of exciting but also a bit scary at the same time for me. I don't know if other people feel like that. Um, it's very different talking to a camera than um, talking to human beings. I'm normally okay, you know, out and about but sometimes in my own space I feel a bit weird. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels like that. So I think I've run out of things to say other than stay safe, wash your hands. Um, I'm not going to go into all that kind of stuff today because we all need a bit of like relief. Um, try check the news just once a day. Um, hug your family if you can. Um, yeah, and just stay safe and I will try and catch up with you again soon. I did wonder about maybe doing a live midnight. Um, I don't know how few people feel about that. Um, I'm kind of new to that idea, but could give it, a, give it a go if you fancied having a go at that. Um, so I'm going to get some sewing done while the little one's sleeping. So take care and I will see you soon. Bye!